Hi, my name is Steve Bruno. I'm an applications engineer here at Sensible Technologies and I'll be demoing a molding workflow with Freeform Modeling Plus. So right here we have a model uh, in Freeform Modeling Plus and I've turned on our parting line colors so that we can see uh, where the parting line will be and if there's going to be any draft issues. You can see the little extra uh, blue spots on the nose and behind the teeth. Um, and right there I'm using the fixed draft, giving it an angle so that um, when the model is actually created into a mold there won't be any uh, issues with the, the draft and it will come out of the mold uh, nice and easy. So I'm just going around with my smooth tool to smooth out some areas around the parting edge so that it is nice and transitioned. So at this point I'm taking the parting line uh, that I created from uh, the tool in the molding uh, tool window and I'm offsetting a three-dimensional curve to the inside and to the outside of the parting line. The reason I'm doing this is I'm going to go ahead and set up right here um, some curve networks so I can create some, uh, some patches um, using the parting line as a guide. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to create this patch and then use it to create um, clay so that I can overlay a complex parting surface over that clay and then make a complex um, mold for the entire part. So as you can see I'm making these individual patches using the curve networks that I set up. And from here um, in my object window and I'm just kind of organizing my lists and I can take all of these individual patches and what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to stitch them all into one patch. So now I'm exporting it out as one binary STL mesh and then from there I can go ahead and take that same exact mesh that I just exported and import it right back in. And you can see on the Dynabar I have my import model uh, options. And what I want to do is I want to import um, this STL mesh and thicken it to plane. So it gives it a, a thickness of clay right there you can see. And I'm just smoothing it out real quick uh, just to give it a better transition. So at this point uh, I'm bringing up a sketch plane and I want to go ahead and draw a square in two-dimensional space and then intersect that plane uh, with the complex piece of clay and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire cut a thickness of that box so I can get a basic shape um, and platform uh, for the insert block that I'll be creating uh, shortly. So now I have one piece of clay and I have brought up another sketch plane and I'm tracing around the complex um, geometry of that piece of the clay and I'm going to go ahead and offset that um, sketch as well to get the same shape but make it a little larger and what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get rid of that extra um, sketch at the top where there's intersecting uh, pieces so I'm just trimming those edges really quickly and then I'm just going to fill it um, or round off those edges so we get a better transitionary uh, sketch. Now what I want to do is I want to project these sketches um, onto the clay and make them into three-dimensional curves. So I'll get rid of the sketch plane and now I have my two my two curves just joining a few um, pieces of the curve so it's one one curve uh, for each piece and now I'm gonna go ahead and draw some more curve networks uh, that connect the two different um, curves and I'm gonna take these curve networks and make them tangent to both uh, pieces of the clay so that when I go ahead and start uh, shaping these pieces with clay um, the transitions between the top and the bottom will be nice and smooth. So you can see those little red discs come up um, that allows you to not only see the, the uh, tangency but you can actually also feel the tangency with our haptic device. So now I want to go ahead and use this tool called Shape Clay and I'm using these boundaries, uh, four curves each, and I'm shaping the clay uh, in between the two parts um, so I get that nice transition slope uh, between the two pieces of clay. The reason I'm doing this is because um, in, the, in the manufacturing process to create this um, complex parting surface um, it will be a lot easier for a large ball cutter to simply um, mill this piece out um, with a more vague surface than to have that real sharp edge uh, that you saw before. So now I have this um, much more complex, much more transitionary piece. Um, I just smoothed it out real quick just to make the transitions that much better and I'm bringing up a new sketch plane drawing another square and projected it to the clay and what I'm doing now is I'm adding points to each of these lines the reason I'm doing that is the more points there are the more uh, data points there are for the patch that I just created to fit to so the patch will fit a lot better to that piece of clay so what I did is I created essentially a parting surface now for this piece of clay 
and I'm using um, clay to patch intersection to get a new parting line. It's going to be very similar to the initial parting line that I created, but since it is a little different, I want to make sure it's perfectly accurate, so I just create a new parting line. Um, and like I said, it's very similar, but it's a lot more accurate than the, the first one that I was using as a guide. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and use the fixed draft tool again, since like I said, the parting line is a little different. So I'm going to fix the draft one more time, just like a, as a double check, make sure it's, uh, you know, fit perfectly to the clay. And I just want to go ahead and use my smooth tool here and just get rid of uh, some of the, the rough, the roughness on the, uh, the parting edge, uh, where the clamshell is actually going to come together to make that mold. So at this point, now I want to start using um, more of the molding tools uh, that come with Freeform Modeling Plus. And after I'm done smoothing that out, I'm going to turn back my parting line or my parting surface, and I'm going to go ahead, go down to the uh, molding tools, and I want to make that face a part. So I use that Make Part tool, and what I'm doing now is setting up the boundaries for the um, actual insert blocks and I need to make sure that they're inside all the extents of the parting surface because I'm going to be trimming that parting surface as you see right there. I also trimmed the inside where the head is and deleted that piece out because that's where the void's going to be. And now I'm creating these two um, meshes, one on either side for the two different core cavities. And what I want to do now is I want to draw some curves, make sure that fit curve is selected on the Dyna bar and I'm setting up a network where I can start creating some manual patches. So you can see I'm going and selecting each of these uh, curves singularly and creating those green patches which um, are connected to the parting surface at that edge uh, as you can see around the edge of where the uh, actual void is and now I have that one parting surface and the void for that one side. Now I'm doing the same thing and just turning on the other mesh cavity and turning on the other insert block. This is all organized on our object window. You can go through and turn uh, different pieces on and off very easily. So now I already did the back head, back of the head, and now I'm going to do the front of the head. And since the front of the head has a lot more detail than the back of the head, I'm going to have to probably draw a lot more curves um, to get the detail, uh, to maintain that detail uh, in the face um, for that insert block for the mold cavity. Now. I'm going to draw, like I said, a few more curve networks. Um, for the sake of the demo, I'm not going to do that many because it's kind of monotonous. Um, but if you want, if you do want to make something that's very accurate, um, you'd probably even want to double or even triple the amount that I'm doing here. But just like I said, for the sake of showing you how it works, um, I'm just going to do a few to get a basic um, representation of this face. Um, you can do it this way by creating these NURBS patches and exporting the whole piece as one. Or since it is a mesh already, um, as long as the clay resolution was very high when you were creating it, um, if it wasn't, you could just bump up that resolution anyways. Um, as long as you have a decent resolution clay piece before you make the mesh, um, you can just export this orange mesh the way it is as an STL. And when you import the STL cavity and the I just or step NURBS file parting surface, you can import both of those as separate files into a CAM program uh, for milling and they will intersect perfectly um, anyways. So it's up to you um, if you want to have two different files or if you want to just make it all one file. What I'm doing here is I am going to make it all one file um, so that it can be imported as one piece. Um, but depending, like I said, depending on the detail that you uh, that you work with here, I have pretty low detail um, because I don't have that many patches. But because I'm working um, this as a simple demo, I just want to show you the concept and not necessarily get too detailed. Just make it look good enough so you can understand the concept that I'm working with. So I've created these uh, these patches and now I'm stitching them together so that I can get one piece and then export each of these insert blocks as its own NURBS file. And then, like I said, the, these uh, these NURBS files can then be used as tooling um, for creating the actual um, insert block uh, mold cavities uh, for that piece. So um, right here, um, I'm just showing the interoperability that's possible uh, with these uh, pieces. I created these pieces in Freeform Modeling Plus. They're exportable as NURBS, and as you can see here, um, I just open up Rhino and I'm importing the IGES data um, just uh, to show you the example that you know it, it is readable by other by other uh, conventional programs. So um, right here, I'll just show you the two uh, the two insert blocks, and uh, there you go. So it came up pretty good, and uh, thanks for watching.